Welcome to geothoughts.eu. In this video, we will cover the geopolitical developments between January 9th and 15th. The Russian armed forces claim that it has taken the control of Solidar, a mining town in eastern Ukraine after intense clashes lasted for days. This signifies the first Russian advance in months after Ukraine's major offensive, which started in September 2022. Yet, Kiev claims that the fighting is still ongoing. The town holds strategic importance as it is a critical Ukrainian supply point in its efforts to liberate its Russia-occupied territories. Therefore, the Russian capture of Solidar may hamper the ongoing Ukrainian offensive. Following this development, President Putin claimed that the special military operation in Ukraine has gained positive momentum. The Euro-Atlantic bond is deepening. In Brussels, NATO Secretary General Stoltenberg, European Council President Michael, and European Commission President von der Leyen signed a new 14-point document calling for close cooperation of NATO and the EU on issues related to European security and defense. The declaration reaffirms the NATO-EU partnership on security and defense. Different than the previous joint declarations, Russia is marked as the gravest threat to the Euro-Atlantic area. In addition, China is also outlined as a challenge that needs to be addressed. The document is diplomatically highly symbolic in affirming the unity of the Euro-Atlantic area as it validates NATO's role as the main security provider and the EU's complementary role to it, as opposed to some claims indicating NATO and the EU's security compatibility. Japanese Prime Minister Kishida met with U.S. President Biden in the White House in an effort to enhance the U.S.-Japanese alliance after Japan's historic decision to double defense spending due to the Chinese threat in the Asia-Pacific region. President Biden endorsed Japanese efforts to modernize and develop its military capabilities and pledged U.S. security commitments towards Tokyo, while Prime Minister Kishida said that the post-Cold War world has come to an end after the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and that if Russia's actions go unchallenged, it would happen elsewhere in the world, including Asia, signaling the Chinese military activity in the region. Despite Tokyo's historical military pacifism, the decision to increase defense spending and the meeting in Washington signal a geopolitical shift in the Asia-Pacific. Turkish President Erdogan's chief advisor Kalin said in an interview that Turkey is not in a rush to ratify Sweden and Finland's NATO accession since the country is preparing for the upcoming elections which are set to take place in May. He also stated that the government does not possess a sufficient number to pass the bill in the national parliament. A critical general election is expected to take place in May in which Erdogan will face a six-party oppositional group organized to end his 20-year-long reign. Last year, a trilateral memorandum was signed between Sweden, Finland, and Turkey to address Turkish national security concerns in exchange for Ankara's support for the Nordic country's NATO membership. Yet, Swedish Prime Minister Christensen said that Stockholm is unable to meet all Turkish demands given their size. Syrian Foreign Minister Mekdid said that Turkey has to end its military presence in Syria to fully normalize diplomatic ties. Recently, Turkish and Syrian defense ministers had met in Moscow to initiate a period of rapprochement which was also endorsed by the Kremlin. Turkey is a major backer of the oppositional political and armed movement in the 12-year-long Syrian civil war, including sending its own armed forces to the north of the country. Unless a common political and military ground is found, it seems difficult for Damascus to agree to Turkish demands for a change in diplomatic relations. That was all for the last week's top geopolitical developments from across the world. Thank you for watching. See you next week.